heaven celebrates, God's eternal kingdom has come. The seventh angel sounds his trumpet. Let us begin with Revelation 11 verse 15, The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign for ever and ever. The seventh angel sounds his trumpet. Much of this awesome book involves waiting for God's timing. As we read, it seems to be happening all at once, but in reality there is an unfolding over time. The seventh trumpet and the consummation of the coming kingdom of Christ are decisive. Now that all this judgment has occurred, at last the seventh angel sounds his trumpet. With that blast it is as though heaven is saying it is finished, it is as good as accomplished even though there are many chapters left in the book of Revelation. Imagine watching a game in which something so decisive happens on the field that you realize the game is over. There is no way the other team can recover. That is the feel here. The declaration of the seventh trumpet is so decisive that there is no way the powers of evil will recover. Loud Voices Immediately John hears loud voices, in contrast to the seventh seal which results in silence for half an hour in heaven. Powerful angels and elders and the redeemed celebrate with all their might. Elsewhere, the sound of their voices is compared to a mighty waterfall, like Niagara Falls, an overpowering, cascading sound. They are not shy or holding back, they are excited. What heaven celebrates? What do they celebrate? Verse 15 says, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. The kingdom of the world represents the force that is in obvious control of the earth. It is singular, not the kingdoms of the world, but the kingdom of the world. The human race is a single unit. We all descend from one man, Adam. Through him, the whole human race was given planet Earth as a stewardship, one kingdom of this world. But Satan usurped Adam's place and took over the kingdom of the world. Adam surrendered the keys of that kingdom to Satan, so Satan is in some dark ways the god of this age or the king of this present kingdom. The twenty-four elders join the praise. Verses 16 to 17 say, And the twenty-four elders, who were seated on their thrones before God, fell on their faces and worshipped God, 17 saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. They are prostrating themselves before God in joyful worship, thanking Him for the open display of His sovereign power, which is essential to seizing back the kingdom of the world from Satan and from the Antichrist, the wicked human rulers. The elders celebrate the awesome power of God to finally establish Christ's reign on earth. My understanding of history is that God raises up monsters, such as Pharaoh who enslaved the Jews, allows them to have a wide range of power, and then crushes them as a display of his power. Verse 18 says, The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead, and for rewarding your servants the prophets and your saints and those who reverence your name both small and great, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. The coming of God's kingdom enrages the people of the earth. They have not been praying, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God and of Christ is repulsive to them, to every fiber of their being. It is the very thing they do not want. They do not find Jesus' yoke easy and his burden light. 
Heaven's Temple Unveiled The Heavenly Realities Behind Moses' Sacrificial System In verse 19, we see Heaven's Temple Unveiled, then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the Ark of his Covenant. In the language of the Old Covenant, Moses' tabernacle and the Ark, the golden box that he made of acacia wood inlaid and overlaid with gold, were a type and a shadow and a symbol of a heavenly temple. So also was Solomon's temple. Hebrews 8 tells us that the Levitical priesthood in the sanctuary is a copy, a replica of the heavenly reality. He rules in devious ways as the power, the puppet master, behind all the thrones of dictators and tyrants. When he takes Christ up a mountain to tempt him in Luke 4 verses 5 to 8, he shows him in an instant all the kingdoms, plural, of the world, with their glory and riches. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. The kingdoms become one entity in Satan's hands. He offers it to Jesus, who refuses, answering heroically, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The Lord's Prayer now fulfilled. This statement proclaims the fulfillment of the very thing we, as disciples of Christ, have been praying for throughout our Christian lives in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How many hundreds of millions of times have those words been said to God? Here at last, God has answered all those prayers, the time has come. Earth enraged, God's eternal kingdom has come. The coming of the kingdom of God enrages the people of the earth. But the joy of heaven is not shared by the inhabitants of the earth. Verse 18 says, The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead, and for rewarding your servants the prophets and your saints and those who reverence your name, both small and great, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Delight in the eternal nature of Christ's coming kingdom. Finally, feed the delight that you have in the coming kingdom, get excited, look forward to it, celebrate it. Think about the Hallelujah Chorus, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ, Hallelujah, and He will reign forever and ever.